I met representatives of the five minor parties in Wellington to get their take on the key issues affecting the disability sector. We had a, a deaf Māori man come in and he spoke to me in sign and it was translated to me by his sign person who came in with him and then he sang and the silence was deafening. It was my first experience of realising how shut out of our world disabled people were. I want those who are vulnerable, those who, are, who really are unable to care for themselves and need some assistance, get it from the state, but get it much more generously than we're able to offer it at the moment. Well, we're very supportive of individualised funding model where it's appropriate and will work as a way of giving people with disabilities the right to decide how they're serviced in that way. We're in the process of getting a lot of feedback from the sector around a discussion document we put out. And we've asked the sector that. We're, we're, we're trying to listen before we speak. We'd like to see um, resources actually available to the Office of the Disabilities um, people to ensure that we can monitor uh, the implementation of the strategy. but also an independent advocacy service, uh, independent disabilities commission, so that government can be held to account for implementing the strategy, the disability strategy, as well as others as well. If the government isn't being held to account, you can't really expect the rest of the sector to do so. This issue of individualised funding, um, which we think will deliver uh, more than it even sounds like. I think it's not just about autonomy and choice, but I think it would actually change the, um, the face of the sector uh, including those who are service providers who would then be answerable to clients more directly than to funders. We've created a safety hammock instead of a safety net. Now that hammock has become so distended now that it's difficult often to see who the truly vulnerable are. And I think that we have a huge amount to learn if we're going to do anything positive and constructive for disabled people. Many of us believe we have two disabled societies one serviced by MOH, the other by ACC. How is this unfair system going to be addressed? We would do whatever it took to, to eliminate that inequity. It is unfair, um, it, it, it's unnecessary. We are doing some investigation into the funding requirements um, that are required you know, to ensure that they are equitable and from there we'll make, we'll, we'll make a policy. I would like to take a long, hard, serious look at uh, ensuring people for illness as we ensure people for accidents. Basically ACC is an insurance-based system and I think that we should be looking at the possibilities of having an insurance-based system for health for healthcare. We certainly um, insure ourselves through ACC against an accident or trauma-based disability, but actually with just as much risk in life of any of other types of um, disabilities from other, other reasons. Do I want to see the whole healthcare system privatised? Absolutely not. I think the public sector has a very, uh, a very valuable role to play, particularly in acute care and in, in very specialist expensive areas like um, oncology, uh, and in fact I think disability falls into that category too. One of the key planks of the disability strategy is that everyone should have the best education possible. How are our candidates going to deliver on that? Our office gets frequent calls from parents who say their disabled children aren't getting the support they need. Yours funding needs to be at least doubled and that was a policy of ours in 2005 so I think it's probably higher than that now. We need to ring fence the uh, funding for moderate and low needs kids as well. The fact that it's bulk funded and schools don't have to account for how it's used means it is misused often and that kids who need it aren't getting access to it. We need to move to a needs based approach to funding. Um, I've had principals in my office as recently as a fortnight ago uh, saying that they are currently funding children with disabilities out of their um, general appropriation, operational grant, and they can't sustain that and it's going to fall over any day now. Uh, ACT's going to offer scholarships at this election. 
Now the scholarships will be based on the amount of funding that uh, primary and secondary school children currently receive. That will be the base funding. For a secondary school child that's around $8,000 a year, for a primary school child around $5,500 a year. So that will be the base funding. But that's assuming that um, they fit the mould, if you like. They're, they're a child without any exceptional circumstances. We will top up the scholarship with additional funding uh, for those children who do have special circumstances uh, and uh, special education and disabilities clearly fall squarely under, under that category. Generally, through their growing up, there is nothing in, in the world of the deaf that enables them to be Māori. Not at all. And I think that probably is true for many Māori disabled, their ability to practice their culture, to be part of it, to be included in it, just simply isn't there because there is only generalist type services available to them. We see very few specialist schools now and our scholarship scheme would actually allow specialist schools to start up or to exist more easily in terms of funding. Nationally, unemployment stands at 3%, but amongst people with a disability, it's 40%. Last year, the Labor government took action on employment repealing the Disabled Persons Employment Promotion Act and guaranteeing disabled workers the minimum wage. Getting into work or back into work can be a real challenge. What are our candidates going to offer to make it happen? So I think career support and education are options that need to be funded. Uh, for people to, to reintegrate back into, into the workforce. Uh, we supported the repeal of the Disabled Persons Employment legislation um, and I think that is a start in, in moving the um, employment sort of sector um, into recognising that disabled people are entitled to the same employment conditions as anybody else. There shouldn't be this distinguish, you know, this um, discrimination really. Um, what I'd like to see happen is that there is some tracking of those people who were employed in the sheltered workshops who may have come out of there, gone into an employment situation, and to track whether in fact they are still employed, whether they are being paid the right rate. As you know, New Zealand First voted against it, not because we didn't believe in it, because we did believe in it, wholeheartedly, but we didn't believe that there were enough safeguards in place. For some of us, getting heard is easy, but there are many people with disabilities who find it difficult to get their message out there. Just who's going to speak up for them? One of the things that a good advocacy service would do would actually help people become their own advocates. It's not about becoming dependent all the time, but helping people find their own voice and, and to make application for things and to make the phone calls they need to make. It's very easy for us to say this is what should be done or this is what shouldn't be done, but quite often we miss the mark. We believe that people in the disability area should be able to advocate for themselves and that there should be education and training available for this to happen. We should be talking to those most affected and if there's an inability for us to communicate with them, then we should be communicating either with their families or those who understand and can represent their interests. That's who we should be talking to in the first instance. Again, I think it's advocacy and support um, so that, that people whose needs we're talking about are the ones who are able to make the decision about what is actually needed for them. And then it's implemented without you know, too much bureaucracy or hassle. Well, we've given you a lot of information. At least you've heard what the politicians say they're going to do. The great thing about a democracy is we all have a say, we all have a vote. Hopefully you'll exercise that vote and the information we've given you will help you do it. Did they actually answer the questions? Well, we asked each politician exactly the same questions and it was fascinating to hear the responses. I certainly formed my opinion as to who is best informed about disability issues.